reject. Yeah. Good morning. My name is uh, Ronald Jaramillo, and I'm a developer and a maker. And I will spend the next 30 minutes trying to convince you that you should get your hands dirty and start playing with hardware. Um, I believe that disruptive technologies change society, and we can drive that change in different directions. For instance, the web can be a really nice place and a great place, but it's not only the technology behind it, but it's the culture that we manage to build around it. Especially if this is a culture that values openness, transparency, collaboration, diversity, and creativity. Um, and we are now moving into a future where applications will be connected and driven by sensors rather than by user input. And computing will be everywhere and on everything. And we need to start thinking about what kind of values we want in this new space. And why I'm talking to you, well, this is a Venn diagram by Brian Genesio. Um, as you can see, there is a large set of people who know JavaScript, a small set of people who know C and C++, and a large set of people with awesome ideas. And we need more awesome. You know about software, and you know about networks, but we all need to learn more about hardware. Not necessarily because you will be building products, but we need to know enough in order to dream about the possibilities and think about what kind of future we want. My talk would go like this. Uh, first, a bit about my background. Then, why I think now is the right time to start tinkering. Um, a question about hardware and JavaScript. Where you should start. And at the end, Felix here will do a bit of walking, and I'll do some show and tell. I was born in 73, the same year these three characters first were introduced. Probably a lot of you don't know who they are or what they are, but during my childhood, they fueled my lifelong fascination for technology and robots. And still to this day, they shape my three main interests in exoskeletons and prosthetics and uh, androids and all that sort of stuff. My early teens, my biggest wish was a Hero One robot kit. And it probably costed an arm and a leg because my parents got me a Dremel instead. <laughs> and they told me that I could be my, build my own. And this started a life of tinkering and working with mechanical contractions. And much the same way I wanted a Atari game console, and my parents, they bought me an Atari ST computer. And that got me into coding, and what really got me hooked was the first time I was able to control pixels on a screen. And even though I was into tech and software, I didn't want to engineer in school. Writing parsers and optimizing sorting algorithms wasn't my idea of fun. So I went to art school and did architecture and industrial and graphic design. But still in high school, I keep coding and doing small projects and got a part-time job uh, with multimedia development. And in this agency, the web exploded, and suddenly I became a one-pixel GIF table ninja. And we were turning out small web apps, even though this uh, agency had serious uh, software developers, but they were busy doing custom desktop applications for enterprise. They didn't want to have anything with the web. Five years later, uh, all this sort of custom development was done on top of a LAMP stack as web applications, and the developers that didn't embrace the web, they were gone. A show of hands out of curiosity, how many of you has another background but software engineering? 
Okay. That's nice. The, um, in 94, Paul Milgram described in a paper this space we now call the Milgram Continuum. And this is a place where this is a mix of the virtual environment on one side and the real environment on the other side. And technology is quickly filling this space up. And the thing is that each major technology converging in this space right now, hardware, software, and connectivity, has previously had a huge impact on its own. So there is no limit to the amount of hype you're currently seeing based on the expected implications of this development. Uh, for some of this technology, media and industry has coined this label IoT, or Internet of Things. And probably you already can find the term in a uh, bullshit bingo card. Um, and why I think that you can get a foothold in this space? Well, there is a trend where hardware is undergoing a democratization process. And this process is driven by uh, different forces, but I will highlight three. Open hardware, com componentization, and rapid prototyping. Let me ask again, how many of you have heard about Arduinos? Yeah, pretty much everything. Good. Well, Arduinos are the best thing coming out of Italy since sliced pizza. It was born as a platform for prototyping, aimed primarily at uh, designers with no background, background in electronics or programming. And their decision to release the blueprints uh, with a Creative Commons license changed the industry that until that point was sort of close and very proprietary. Today, there are thousands of platforms available for physical computing that takes the messy details of uh, microcontroller programming and wrap it up in an easy-to-use package. One project I'm very excited about is the Tesla 2 coming in November. And they, they managed to pack a Node.js uh, the, on the board. And they have this nifty architecture of plug and play, where each component has a corresponding uh, NPN package. So uh, let me ask, how many of you have actually played with an Arduino? Oh, that's nice. So I'm preaching for the choir, I can see. Well, the first time I, uh, I got to turn an LED on and off with an Arduino, it was a very special feeling. It was sort of the same feeling I, that, that got me into programming for the first time. And the thing is that code transcending from bytes to the physical realm is a very powerful experience. And the next aspect I will talk about is componentization, which I'm not really sure it's a proper word, but picture what the NPM is doing for the Node.js uh, ecosystem, but then think, translate it to hardware. If your project needs a GPS positioning, or take pictures, or biometrics, or uh, any kind of sensing, or communication like Bluetooth or Wi-Fi, well, there is probably a component for that. And these components, uh, they take care of the... You don't need to think about internals or the circuitry. You just add it to your project, plug it, and import libraries, and uh, you're good to go. And there are companies, companies like Adafruit and SparkFun and Polulu, they have you covered. They have a lot of amazing stuff and also tutorials. It used to be like when you need a component, you have to uh, read a spec sheet and out of that find out how things work. But today, you really have a lot of help. Adafruit, they themselves say jokingly that they are not a hardware company. They are a tutorial company with a gift shop. The third aspect I will talk about is rapid prototyping. Um, 3D printers and laser cutters and CNC machines, they are becoming much more accessible. Today, you can get desktop models of all these machines. And they're within the reach of individuals. And 
the number of Fab Labs and makerspaces around the world keep increasing. At the same time, the software to manage these machines is becoming, is constantly improving, and CAD system used to be really expensive, and now they're becoming a commodity. The latest generation of this uh, software is cloud-based, and collaboration and versioning is at the core of these packages. So how is this relevant? Uh, I can personal, personally, I can tell you that the first iteration of Felix looked like that. It was a one-off, made in my shop, and uh, made of aluminium. It, uh, you need tooling and precision, and it's, easy to, it's difficult to update, and it's difficult to share. Uh, simplifying the, the design and going digitally, I can create much, um, much cleaner hardware, which is easy to reproduce, easy to update, and easy to share. So what's powerful about these machines and, softwares, uh, and software systems is that they allow you to share physical designs the same way that we share code. So what's about with JavaScript and hardware? Uh, embedded systems used to be programmed with low-level languages. And they still do mostly, but thanks to some Badass developers, we have alternative in JavaScript. <laughs> and Johnny5 is a JavaScript programming framework that allows you to control a rich variety of hardware. And, but to be honest, the first time I heard about JavaScript and hardware, I was like, hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but I, after playing with it, I actually found out that this is not a case of, of what else we can do. In JavaScript, you don't need to clutter your code with pooling. You can add an event listener, attach an event listener, and wait for the call. This is because, and, and, and the thing that hardware being event-based and asynchronous by nature make it a really good match. Then we have uh, prototypes, which provide a, the required flexibility to create some very neat abstraction layers to hide some of the underlying complexity of all this hardware. And Johnny5 takes great advantage of all this. I can illustrate with an example. There are a number of components you can use to measure distance. And uh, all of these components they have their own way of speaking with uh, the microprocessor. They can be sound-based, light-based, or lasers. And um, JavaScript, um, Johnny5, wrap it up in a proximity class. And it, can look like, and it looks like this. In Felix here, I have a sharp sensor. This is a... Um, infrared sensor, and the code to manage it is quite simple. You get Johnny5, and you instantiate a board. When the board is ready, you instantiate your uh, component, and you tell the component, if the distance to uh, your measure change, please tell me. And say I got um, a present for Christmas. I got a lighter light laser component. The only thing I have to change is the name of the controller. And that's, that's quite powerful. Um, so, in the same way that jQuery sort of abstract the document object model, Johnify is taking care of all this underlying hardware for you. Yeah, well, where you, sh where you can get started? You can get some toys. I would recommend that you get a start kit. There are a lot of uh, start kits that came, come with an assortment of sensors and actuators. And then you get Johnny5 and start playing with the examples. Uh, besides the community, Johnny5 
has really a good thing going for it is the documentation. And for each example, you get this nice diagram showing how you, you can wire everything up. And then get this book. It's, a, it's not only about robotics. Uh, there are some neat projects, uh, wearable projects, and also IoT projects. They will sort of learn you, give you some best practices and ideas of what you can do, what's possible in this space. But don't lock, you need to lock yourself in a room and hide away and start tinkering. You can join the community, you can join a Nodebots event. There are events and meetups around the world. If there is no meetup close to where you live, you can consider starting your own chapter. You can join a Fab Lab or Makerspace. How many here are members of uh, Makerspace or Fab Lab? That's not much. Well, really consider it. You will meet people doing stuff with their hands. It's really inspiring. And uh, probably you'll be the only one around who really understand programming, and you will be treated like a wizard. <laughs> so um, I'm into robotics. Uh, I like uh, four-legged robots. The current uh, state of the art is represented by Boston Dynamics. They have uh, Spot, which is a electric four-legged robot, and Big Dog, which uh, you probably have seen, that's a hydra hydraulic uh, engine power, uh, gas power uh, beast. They can run, they can jump. That's MIT cheetahs. Uh, and they can take a beating. But there is a, still a long way to go. That's Daisy. And, uh, I've been working on a four-legged robot for some time. It's called Felix. And my goal was to create a simple and cheap leg robot. The kits out there tend to be uh, complex and use a lot of servers. And actually, I think they're kind of creepy. <laughs> and my goal was to create a, a robot with eight servers, and the challenge, challenge there was to explore the types of gates that were possible with only eight degrees of freedom. The system uh, is based on um, um, an Arduino Uno. I have a server control chip, some sensors. On the Arduino, we have Fimata, um, which uh, live as um, firmware. And the uh, Fimata talks to Uni5 over socket, uh, uh, over the serial port. On top, I'm using Express.js and Socket IO to provide the UI. So when you have to learn uh, to get a four-legged robot walking, you need well, there are three steps, or you need three uh, three parts of your code. One part will be dealing with the position of, of your feet, because you don't want to deal with the rotation angles. You just want to decide where you place the foot, and then calculate the angles using trigonometry. And then you want to do some motion planning, like how is your step going to work, you have a drag, you have a lift, and then you combine these motions into gates. Um, now we'll do, Felix will do a bit of walking. And, uh, 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 I think he's better. Can you see him? He's on the floor. <laughs> Is it possible to see him? Uh -huh. 
And as you can see, these sensors, they um, map the distance and tell him not to bump into anything. There's a lot of light here, so he's quite confused, as you can see. But let's see if he managed to do some walking. Uh, uh, this is big enough. Again, the UI is talking, uh, is talking to the Arduino using socket I.O. And this is a creeping gate. I can tell him to walk forward, stop, sort of go backward. He didn't want to go backward. You're a bit not. No, he didn't want to. You, no. Well, he still wants to go forward. He can turn around. And the thing is that because he doesn't have the right number of uh, mobility in the coxa, he is constrained. So when he, when he wants to turn, what he does is that he takes smaller step, steps with the legs at that side he wants to turn to. And he can sit. <laughs> And he can take. And he has also another gate, which is the trot, which is sort of a weird tapping dance. <laughs> Let me. <laughs> so. And this is his, the, his little brother. It, it's using a smaller servos with not much torque. And the idea is to develop this into kits that you can play with with children or or other people, at least in the hackerspace, kids really like to play with this stuff because you can use the sensors to, for instance, he stops when uh, there are obstacles in front, and actually I haven't learned him that he shouldn't go there. No, but <laughs> <laughs> so, I go back to my talk. Let me see. There are some links to all the resources available. Check out the Tesla, I would recommend it. Check out Johnny5 to get you started. And go and play. Thank you. Reject.